Well, good morning, everybody. It's absolutely lovely having you here this morning. Um, and can you believe that we've uh, we've just passed the nine week mark? We're just entering into that 10 weeks worth of, of lockdown. I don't know about you, but certainly when I've been talking to a large number of people, they are really starting to I would say, struggle a little bit. It's almost like the novelty of lockdown has now passed. And now it's like, really? How much longer is this going to go on? And I, it's sort of those anxiety elements are coming through. And people are moving, not just looking at their life, but their livelihood and their lifestyle and mental well-being. So I, I feel that there's a lot of burdens out there at this moment in time, and people are quite anxious about things. So today is really a sort of a morning very much where we want to spend some unhurried time with God moving into almost a safe place, a safe place where we feel protected, where the Lord is overshadowing us. And that's a great place therefore for us to start by seeing together with Harriet, holy overshadowing. Spread your wings of mercy over me And guard my heart with true humility No shadow of the darkness pressing in Only the holy overshadow Oh mm -hmm. 
Thank you. That was beautiful. As I said, it's lovely having uh, having you with us today to share this time together. Uh, but also, I want to thank you for those people who had those technical issues last week. They're coming back again. So thank you very much indeed for that. That's really handy. Um, we've got a large number of people, as always, uh, who have, uh, have dialed in with us. Let me just read them out. Let's hope I've got um, all of them here. Here we go. So um, eyes down. Here we go. Uh, Alex, you've got Andy, Ali, Grace and Luke. Uh, Andrew Martin from, uh, from Parkstone, Anita and Paul, Ben and Kate, Bernard and Joyce Ford, Bob and Bev, Claire and Guy, uh, Debbie Clements, where's Rob then? Um, Edwina Marshall from Halifax, um, Elizabeth and Malcolm, Elizabeth Williams, Emma and Eve, uh, Fiona Whitaker, Jeff and Rita, the Hardy family, Heather and Heather Thurwood, uh, Helen Skinner, uh, Jackie Buttress, Jane Bottomley, Jeff and Sue from Down Under, uh, Jim and Jackie Bilton, John and Rachel, John and Sheila Williams, Josh, Joyce and Bernard Ford, Julia and Harvey, uh, Julian Halstead, Kate, Joe and Sophia, Ken and Jackie, uh, Dilly, uh, Lewis and Allison from Spain, Luke Nats and little baby Rosa, uh, Malcolm and Stella Savage, Margaret, Margaret Thomas and Chris Thomas, uh, Margot, Chris and Paul Routledge from Chelmsford, Martin, Sarah and Isabel, and Millie, Martin and Sarah, Max, Mernie and Tim Ford, Mike and Liz, the Neats, the Palmers, the Parsons, Pat Elliott. In fact, I spoke to Pat yesterday and she specifically said that she wanted to send her love to all her brothers and sisters. And um, despite all the challenges, she was saying that she counts her blessings. So, good old Pat. Uh, Patrick and Steph Taporis, Pete and Julian Cook, Peter and Janet, uh, Phil and Julia Evans from Ipswich, Phoebe, Rachel, Sophie and Lydia, Rex and Carol, Streaming from Australia, the Roberts family, Roger and Kay Webb, Roy, Shireen, Nicole, Cameron and Cassie uh, from Australia. They like us, don't they? Sally, June and, and Abby, who are actually next door. Uh, Sam and Kate, Sarah, um, Sarah, Liz and Ella, Shirley, Ben and Cammy, Steve Williams, Stuart, Sue, Sue and Steve. That's uh, Steve Henstridge. And I spoke to Ray yesterday and he also sends his love to everybody. Uh, Sue and Tim, Suzanne and Baz, the Dale Massif, uh, the Lunds, the DeWitts, the Skinners, the Walkers, Wendy and Paul Gentle, Will, Rebecca and Jemima, and Yvonne Salisbury. I tell you what, it's lovely having you all with us today for this, this time of reflection, of rest, of contemplation, of just uh, sort of reconfiguring um, ourselves and our relationship with, with God. So uh, I think it's now appropriate that we have some prayer time together, prayer for, for our brothers and sisters worldwide. Um, I know specifically about Harry, that's baby Harry, that's Andy and Shireen's uh, little son. Uh, a number of you will be aware of his situation. Um, uh, he's been in intensive care and he's still there at the moment. Hopefully we'll come out to the main ward today uh, slightly improving and uh, is looking hopefully to be able to go back home the middle of the week but they're still very very worried about his weight so I know that Steve Stephen will uh, will mention Harry in uh, the prayer that we're about to, about to give so Stephen um, over to you but just before that just tell me how you're doing because obviously uh, amazingly enough you are a key worker and uh, and so's Amy and yet you're still home educating as well. So how's all that going? Hi, brother. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been an interesting uh, four or five weeks for us. So um, yeah, a key worker, who would have thought that? Um, so yeah, we've, we're fine, thank you. And I think it's been great that on, we've got this week off ahead. So uh, it was really nice on Friday to uh, switch off the uh, work iPad or work laptop. Uh, Amy was able to put the school books in the cupboard and we can just have a week together this week. Um, but yeah, it's been interesting times, thank you. Um, yeah, good morning, everybody. So if you please like to bow your heads, we'll, I'll open with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time we can share together. Whilst we can't have fellowship with each other, literally, we are thankful that we can be together. We take comfort in knowing you are in control. Please be with those who are struggling, looking for hope. Be with us. We look for 
that and bring them closer to you. We especially think of baby Harry, Shireen and Andy. Help them find some peace and strength for the week ahead and be with the doctors and nurses who are providing his care. Be with Sarah, Liz and Ella and put your loving arms around them as they deal with a challenging situation at home. And also be with Mon Sharp, who is in pain, and, and Baz, who is supporting her. We ask for your healing hand to be with all those who are unwell. Keep them safely in your care and provide strength and comfort. Thank you for your answered prayers. Baby Lydia is responding to treatment and recovering. And James Evans getting into his chosen school this year has taken away worry and concern for Jenny and Stephen. Bless our church family as we humbly come before you now, remembering the ultimate sacrifice you gave for us. We offer this prayer through our Saviour, your Son Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. A little bit of a challenge there again with the, uh, the internet, but... Thank you very much. That was great, Stephen. And so uh, we come and think a little bit more about reconnecting with God, that time of rest, that time of slowing down. I'll be really honest with you. I'm rubbish at this. This really is not my bag. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to hearing what Ellie's got to say about this period of time when we slow down, we rest, we take time out for an unhurried time. With God. Ellie, over to you. Good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying a bit more freedom to get outside at the moment. For us it's made such a big difference to be able to leave the house more than once, particularly because our little one Reuben, who's two next month, is very slow at walking. On our family walks it's hard for us to walk more than a few metres before he comes to a standstill. And this pause is usually followed by a wow or a ooh as he gazes at something he's found by the side of the road. This is usually something as simple as a leaf, a little flower, a stick or an insect. He says it as if he's never seen anything quite like it before. It can be quite frustrating when you want to get up a bit of a pace or move beyond the end of our road at least. But it struck me recently how special it is that he's very content to sit and gaze and wonder at all. He's not blinkered by any sort of time pressure, to-do list or busy thoughts. In fact, recently he started to walk even more slowly as he's mastering the art of walking backwards. Here's a little video clip to show you. You're walking backwards. Watch out for the tree. So you might have guessed from the video that what I want to focus on this morning is the idea of slowing down. One of the real positives of the lockdown that lots of people are talking about is the opportunity to slow down. While some of us are perhaps feeling busier than ever juggling homeschooling as well as work, many people have been furloughed and forced to stop working altogether. Others are having to rest because of illness. When the world came to a relative standstill in March, it forced us to live differently. Being unable to make plans in the same way we've had to learn to live more simply, one day at a time. And it's made us think about the need to reconnect with what and who are really important to us. And I want to use this time this morning to think about what is really important. And to me, that's the need to find rest from all of these unknowns, to find peace with God. Rest is fundamental. It's right there in the beginning. The creator of the universe and everything in it made time to rest on the seventh day of his creation. Right from the start, he gives us an example to follow. Even if God, with his infinite power, didn't need to physically rest himself, he, so, he shows us the importance of stopping. It doesn't say in Genesis how exactly God rested, 
but I like to imagine that he simply took delight in everything that he had made. The sun rising and setting, the stars in the sky, and all of the beautiful landscapes and creatures beneath it. God knows that rest is so important to our well-being that it predates the law itself. Finding rest in the form of the Sabbath became one of God's Ten Commandments to his people because rest is so vital. God created the Sabbath for us, Jesus tells us in the New Testament, not for it to be a man-made religious ritual, but for our good. We have to recognise our need for it, our need to slow down and reconnect with God. Even the Son of God, Jesus, showed us that he needed rest. While we'll never be as in demand as Jesus was, he shows us the importance of stepping away from it all to recharge physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. One of the examples of this is recorded in Mark 4, and Kate's going to read a passage from Mark 4 for us now. Mark 4, verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Thank you, Kate. So Jesus, at the point of his ministry, was being followed by such huge crowds of people that he felt the need to distance himself a little from them physically. The crowd stood listening to him on the shore of the lake whilst he sat in a boat with his disciples, teaching them. The following Jesus had must have felt relentless and draining a lot of the time. And they would have wanted to see what they could get from him, having heard all about his teachings and healings. After Jesus taught this crowd a number of important life lessons through his parables, he asks the disciples to travel to the other side of the lake with him, presumably to find some peace and quiet. Not long after this, Jesus falls asleep in the boat, despite being in the middle of a huge storm with waves crashing over the side of it. He must have been absolutely exhausted to be able to fall asleep in these scary conditions, with the disciples clearly concerned about it all. And he must have felt confident that God was looking after him, giving him peace and rest. It's important to be reminded of Jesus' humanity, that despite having God's strength to teach and heal, he, like us, needed to take himself away from a busy environment and simply stop. That is when Jesus needed spiritual rest in Matthew 14. And Kate's going to read a section from that for us now. Matthew 14, verses 13 to 23. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. When Jesus hears that his friend John the Baptist is beheaded by King Herod, we read that he retreated to a quiet place to pray. Jesus must have been feeling a mix of emotions, grief over John's sudden death and fear of what lay ahead for himself. 
Whatever it was, he needed time to process his thoughts and feelings. First, it says that he went to a solitary place in a boat, and later we read that he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray alone. It's significant that he did this alone. Jesus was always in demand with so many people that time alone with God must have felt very scarce and very precious. It wasn't long after this moment of solitude that Jesus was soon followed by a huge crowd again. He felt compelled to act and took compassion on those that were sick and needed healing. He also then went on to meet their other physical needs, feeding 5,000 people. There was always important work for Jesus to do. But despite this, Jesus deliberately removed himself from the crowd again to prioritise spending time with his father. We need to learn from his example, to step away from what's taking up our mind space, to find a quiet place to reflect and read and pray. In a Christian book called Breaking Busy, the author talks about the importance of unhurried time with the Lord. She says it's not rushed, it's intentional, purposeful and meaningful exactly what staying connected to God through prayer and scripture should be like. Jesus' example of retreating to a mountainside is a beautiful reminder of how we can find God more easily. Although there aren't any scenic mountains where we live, we have a local nature reserve which is a lovely place to walk in at sunset. Recently looking at the beauty of the pink sky, the bluebells and the Chiltern Hills in the distance made me feel that much more aware of God, the creator of everything surrounding me. It made me want to start praying much more naturally than if I was indoors with my phone on, distracted by other time fillers. Sometimes we just need to take ourselves away from it all, as Jesus did, to truly connect with God. Until the point of death, Jesus maintained his close relationship with God in prayer. In Matthew 26, we read that when Jesus felt troubled and sorrowful in his mental struggle leading up to the cross, he still took himself aside again and again to pray. Even in his most challenging moments, he would have found a source of strength and peace, being in God's presence. Jesus turned to God with all his fears and doubts and in his distress. Jesus, having experienced the ultimate challenge of being human, invites us to share our burdens with him now. We too can come to God just as we are. Whatever it is that's weighing us down, Jesus wants us to come to him so that he can help carry our load. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus doesn't promise to take it all away from us, but he does promise to help us find rest from it. To help free us from our burdens, to find love, healing and peace with God. And so Jesus says, come to me, all you who've got concerns and are worried about things and are burdened. And God says, come to me and I'll give you rest. And those sentiments are beautifully summed up in this song, which is composed and sung by a group of Christians from one of our Christadelphian churches in Australia. And they've allowed us to play it here this morning recognising that God is our rock, our refuge and our strength. The Lord is my rock refuge and strength he is my salvation the one whom i trust and he is the one and only true god he made all creation the ones who i Blessings of grace, love, hope, and life. 
Thank you, Ellie. That was really helpful about us spending some unhurried time with God. And so now we come to the Lord, weary and burdened. And how do we come? We come just as we are. And now with this bread, we're going to give thanks for the bread. And Ben is going to say that for us. Heavenly Father, as we come in prayer to you now, we thank you for this time shared together, remembering the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. His obedience to you leading to the cross has given us the victory, that hope of life. In this bread we see his body freely given to help us today to also freely give our lives to you as we wait for the kingdom to come. So as we take this bread, please bless us at this time as individuals, as a church here at Maidenhead and as a community ready for him to come, which we pray for soon. And we ask it through Jesus' name now. Amen.
and now with the wine. But we all drink this. Although it doesn't feel like that we're together, we all are drinking this and sharing this cup of wine together. And Jeff is going to give us our prayer for the wine. Let us now give thanks for the wine. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this wine, the symbol of the blood of Christ shed for us. This cup reminds us of the supper Jesus had all those years ago. We remember how he passed the cup to his disciples and asked them all to drink from it. We cannot do that as things are at present, but despite that, the cup of wine as a symbol retains its power. It tells us of what Jesus was prepared to do that he gave his life for us, and we praise and thank him for his great love. We know that because of his sacrifice, we share in the blessings that flow from it, blessings of fellowship and of the life of the Lord that still circulates among us. So although we cannot pass the cup from hand to hand, we continue to share in the blessings that come from his sacrifice, both in this life and in the age to come. So bless us now, Heavenly Father, as we take this wine, a blessing we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're slowing down, we're reconnecting with God and Jesus, we're reconfiguring some of the things that we do. And of course, not only are we spending time with them, we recognise that the Lord is my shepherd. And it's appropriate, therefore, that we now sing this song in the traditional tune uh, together.
thank you, choir. I hope you joined in with them. Uh, that was quite some feat, wasn't it? Just so you're probably looking at who are those people who are singing there? Well, uh, thank you, Sarah, for, for leading us um, on piano. So on soprano, you had Sally and Rachel. On alto, there was Claire and Kate. And then on tenor was Andrew and Guy. And on bass was Guy. Rem he's a remarkable man, that guy, who said that men can't multitask. There you go. Uh, great stuff. Thank you so much for helping us there. Um, and now we're just going to look and move forward to the announcements. Uh, just think a little bit about some of the things we did last week. Uh, thank you to everybody who contributed last week. And you probably don't know about uh, Chloe. Chloe Willis completed her 24-hour run for charity. Uh, so well done, Chloe. Great stuff. Um, so what's coming up then this coming week? Well, we've got Wednesday. We've got Tea and Talk, as you can see here from, uh, from the slide. Of course, every day of the week um, at uh, 10 o'clock, we have our uh, daily Bible readings. Um, and then Wednesday, as you can see, tea and talk. Uh, so that's going for really well. That's at three o'clock on Wednesday. And then on Wednesday evening is Bible class. Now, I think I said in my, my note that I sent out, uh, I haven't heard this Bible class, but, he, but Jeff has given it before. And I was abroad at the time. My word, Sally kept on about it, how great it was. Uh, so we're about to find that out. Uh, so Jeff's going to be leading our thoughts on the Song of Songs on Wednesday evening at Bible class. And then next Sunday, Paul is going to be in the chair and Jimma is going to be uh, helping us in some of our thoughts uh, during our service next Sunday. So please join us then. And of course, next Sunday, as you can see, um, is our uh, Praise at Home time. Now then, uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you've heard a little bit about it. Uh, it's a nationwide event. Um, we've got uh, some of our own members who are going to be involved in that. Uh, ben and the Silbies are going to be involved. We've got uh, Harriet. We've got Paul um, as well. So there's quite a few people just from Maidenhead. But as I said, it's from across the country. And it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a sort of an evening, an hour long situation. Uh, whereby, uh, yes, there'll be a lot of uh, contemporary Christian songs, but it's mainly as well a time for May We Eat, to donate. So just like when we have those Friday nights uh, when we're raising money for various causes, this is a little opportunity for an hour for you to do the same. And as you can see from uh, this, uh, this slide here, this is how you actually access uh, the, uh, the, 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 the talk itself. It's actually on this um, link that you have used today. Please come along. Please uh, support it and donate. Uh, I know that the Southern Choral did something a little bit similar uh, yesterday and it was very successful and take a look uh, if you can on YouTube at what they did. So please come along and join us and donate next Sunday evening. So that brings us really to the conclusion of our time together. We're going to be uh, having a song um, and uh, that song is going to be led by Ben. It's actually two Bens this time. It's not four Bens or one Ben. And those of you who have, people who haven't listened before, think what's doing about four Bens? You'll see what I mean in a minute. There's two Bens this time. So Ben's going to be leading us with the song in a moment. And after that, um, we've got Phoebe who will be closing in prayer. And then please join for our final hymn. And our final hymn is, Be Still and Know That I Am God. A very appropriate conclusion to our time together. So we're now thinking about uh, what Ben's going to be singing. And this is a, a song that Ellie pointed out to me. It's by, a house fire. it's by House Fires. And it's called You Are My Peace. And it's focusing very much about trusting in God. And when we trust him, we gain peace. And it's asking the Lord to carry our burdens. I lay my burdens at your feet I 
I'm letting go of all the things I can control In my frailty, Lord, I find your strength I am depending on a love that won't let go So I trust you, I trust you, I trust you Oh, you are my peace I lay my burdens at your feet I'm letting go of all the things I can't control in my frailty, Lord, I find your strength I am depending on a love that won't let go So I trust you, I trust you, I trust you Oh, you are my peace I don't have to be strong, you are my strength you are my strength, you are my strength, and I don't have to hold on, you don't let go, you don't let go, oh you don't let go, and I don't have to be strong, you are my strength, you are my strength, oh you are my strength. Our loving, faithful and gracious Father. You know every worry, anxiety and weakness that each one of us has. You know all things and all hearts. Thank you for your love, understanding and patience. We know that we need to find you at the centre of all our chaos. That we need to focus on you, our sustainer our resting place, now and as we move forward this week. Lord, help us to see you clearly in our lives. Lord Jesus, be our cornerstone. We know you are behind us as we walk, before us when we stumble, and beside us when we need your courage or direction. Help us to feel your presence and your direction. Father, I pray that your face shines on all of us now, that we feel your warming embrace at this time, your strength, your power, your drive for goodness. Father, work through us to bring your goodness and compassion to all those around us each day. Be with those struggling with the fallout of COVID-19, those on the front line, those sick themselves, 
those who have lost everything dear to them. Help us to think of those who have no one to turn to, to remember the forgotten, to seek out the unseen, and to love the unlovable with your guidance this week. Help us to find peace in you, our resting place, so that we might bring your peace to those around us. Thank you for your son, your child, who shows us the way and helps us to remember how. We thank you for the positives we have come to the world through this dark time too. The opportunity for your creation to breathe again, the renewed sense of community and love, setting aside of differences. We know you are in control and we can trust you. Your will be done. May your face shine through us in love. Amen.